to hear where I will be joined by the Stig uh, during the show, where I'll have several questions from, and he'll have his input into the national hunt scene uh, for the entire winter leading up to the Cheltenham Festival next March. Um, he started off last week, he had an app Pied Piper, and uh, he had two other selections. So hopefully he can continue that trend and you will be able to uh, trust his opinion. I know uh, there was people saying last week that uh, why would you uh, listen to a faceless or voiceless uh, person? Well, hang in there and that might change this week. Um, if you get my gist. Um, we're not competition. We're not in competition with any other show or anything like that so compared I, I want to have this unique way of doing things so uh, this is my style and comparing it with the other people do things like you know probably isn't the best thing and uh, we'll see how it goes just give it legs and if it doesn't work out i'll be the first to know and we can see how it goes but anyway um i have two tips as well for tomorrow it's known in the racing calendar as charlie hall weekend so we have uh, the Dex in and uh, Brave Man's Game and Ahoy Senior are uh, declared to run on Saturday in Weatherby. Uh, the score is 2-1 uh, to uh, Ahoy Senior and um, the Stieg will tell you his opinion on that race uh, presently. What a mouth-watering clash we have here between Brave Man's Game and Ahoy Senior. These two high-class novices from last year will go toe-to-toe -to -toe once again. Brave Man's game was probably the best jumper we've seen from a novice last year, and a high senior duly put him in his place in entry. I think if Lucinda Russell can have a high senior fit first time up, and have improved on his jumping from last year, I think he will take all the beating on the galloping track of Weatherby. Also this weekend, there's a big race down under uh, in, the, uh, in Ranwick. Um in Australia, Rosarius and Rose Hill in Sydney in Australia, the Golden Eagle. It takes place Saturday morning. I think it's a quarter to seven. Or it could be quarter to six, right early in the morning anyway. It's the second richest race in the world after the Melbourne Cup. And the favourite in that is actually Light Infantry, formerly trained in the UK by uh, David Simcock, ridden in all of its starts by uh, Jamie Spencer, who is also going down to ride in uh, the uh, race. Now it's down to the last few weeks and it's supposed to be training well. It's plus three to one yesterday, it's into two to one uh uh eleven to five in that region now. Uh, it would have um, been second last time out in Spiral. But I don't know about that group one forum, um, because in Spiral got beaten since. Um Frankie Notori is riding a horse in it as well. Uh Wellwall. But I thought there was an interesting horse at 20 to 1 called Overpass. Um, it was bought specially to run in this race. I know there's a pot of uh, over 5 million to the winner. But it was bought specially by a clever individual called James Kennedy. I wonder if that James is on the bus recently. That's going to have new passengers on. Maybe it is. Maybe he could enlighten us in the comments. Good man James. Um, but it was bought at a big price. And it's 20 to 1. Uh, and it was... Uh, Staying on third the last time in that the shorts race uh, that Nature Strip won, so um, anyone if, if the uh, favourite in that is um, uh, Light Infantry, it's out of fast company, and all of its wins and good runs were on soft ground. And uh, as uh, you know that I like the fast company and soft. If the weather conditions came up soft, it would uh, benefited more so. Uh, if it was good or good to firm in that region, um, I don't think it would be worth the bet, uh, depending on the weather. Um, so you will see. Um, I have another question for the Stig. Um, the, he napped uh, Pied Piper last weekend, and I was wondering what did he make of the performance and uh, also of the decision by Gordon Elliott to go down the champion hurl route uh, for Cheltenham uh, next year. Last weekend, I napped up this horse, Pied Piper, to go and do the business in Cheltenham, and he duly obliged, although he tried his best to pull in any power at the last, and my heart was in my mouth, but overall it was a good positive ride from Jack Kennedy. Paddy Brennan tried to sneak in behind him and follow him all the way through, but Paddy ended up switching twice, um, and Pied Piper ended up just getting away from him. 
and winning by a hands and heels right on the day. Gordon's decision to send him to the champion hurdle, um, it's a tricky year for juveniles the year after they step out into open company and this lad although he looks like he has a good level of ability I do think he's going to fall short of the champion hurdle level coming up against the likes of maybe a Vauban that he found difficult to pass last year, a Honeysuckle and obviously the likes of a Constitution Hill who looks an absolute monster this year. We keep him busy now when we have him on. Uh, I read as well that Sir Gerhard um, is going to be going down a similar uh, path to uh, Pied Piper. Um, what do you make of that, uh, Stieg? And it, it'll make it into a fierce uh, competitive interest and affair uh, when you have Constitution Hill and when you have um, Honeysuckle, the reigning uh, the champion as well, uh, together with other up-and-coming horses. Um, what's your views uh, in uh, the end of October? looking ahead towards March. Willie Mullins this week, as he often does, has thrown in a curveball with Sir Gerhard, a horse I followed along all last season and ended up back in the Mandy Post for the Ballymore at 6-1 to and luckily Willie placed him there in March. But for me, he doesn't jump slick enough to be a champion hurdle horse. Also, he's a point-to-point -point winner, so I can see him going into Novice Chase Company this year, as I just think his jumping won't stand up to the speed and the test of a champion hurdle. Two horses that I have uh, picked out for tomorrow. Um, I didn't couldn't get a handle on some of the National Hunt racing because, as you know, I'm a farm man and I can't be going for uh, stuff or horses that uh, haven't ran already. But um, uh, some of you might have to look away now, but uh, there's two horses in Dundalk. Um, the 7 o'clock on the dock is a mile race, um, 50 to 80, there's 14 runners. With Colin Keane looking for uh, as many winners as possible, uh, neck and neck with uh, Billy Lee in the race for the championship. Uh, Ger Lyons sends out Bucky Larson to run uh, here off top weight. It's rated 80. He just scrapes in, uh, but the last time he was near this mark was uh, in uh, 2020, in February 2020, when he won off 78. And then he, he, that was in Dundalk over a mile. And then he won again the following start of 85 in Gordon Park to move up to 91. And he was in the, right in the 90s all of last year. So he's sliding down the ratings. He scrapes into this 50 to 80. And I've no idea the price uh, because it's this, I'm recording this about a quarter to one on uh, Thursday. So uh, depending if it's five to one or over, I back it each way. And if it's not, back it to win. So that's Bucky Larson at 7 o'clock. And I'm given one more last chance to uh, to Inishmo Prince in the 5.30. Um, both his wins at the track have come over five furlongs uh, last February and March of 60 and 64. A faster pace uh, over five, and he's drawn two, will probably suit. Um, so uh, one more chance to that. And... Um, if I do find anything uh, in the market moves around and later in the day or this evening, I'll add it to the description overnight. And um, finally now, oh yeah, uh, I had uh, said last week, Christina Davis was the last week uh, of uh, what we're going to do with the bets. And um, she uh, should have one point because one, I'm going to calculate it as a, uh, just one point win on whatever the SP returns is from uh, the, the Stig's selections. So he's going to have a nap, a next best, and a each way selection each week. So she has one point after last week. Um, I was going to dip into the hat, with, but then I thought, hold on, we have to be loyal to our uh, um, employees on the bus. And they're saying, now oh, what employees are on the bus? Well, Christine is the queen of the bus, but we also have a DJ, that's Lee Stains, and he is this week's selection. He makes my morning uh, every day with all his uh, wish, and uh, we have a barman as well. He'll be next week, that's Steo, he's from Clondalkin in Dublin, Arui. And uh, then we have uh, a couple of chefs. Uh, Rob the Old Man Goose and Craig has been chefing for the bus for a while, and we have uh, a barbecue man, Spaldo Aldo. He'll be included. And we have uh, our Peter Wood. He's in charge of the fire extinguishers. Um, I'll check back as well to see what other jobs have I allocated. And there'll be other alloc jobs allocated as I see fit when we need them. Um, so back to the Stig now for his, uh, his 
bets for the weekend and the name of the person will be this week will be our DJ Lee Stains. I just want to speak for a few moments about a few horses that caught my eye over the past week. The first one that caught my eye was Charles Burns shoot first. Now Charles had brought the wheelbarrow with him that day and unloaded into 9-4 to four favorite and he was as high as 10 to 1 during the week so Charles made a pretty penny off that. Now a bad stat for shoot first is he's going for the per temps and the horses that usually win the qualifiers which is what he won the weekend usually don't go on to win the final so that's just something to bear in mind with him the second horse that took my fancy for the week was Ecanto Bruno for John McConnell in the bumper in Cheltenham on Saturday he won the race after going a, a snail's pace for the opening mile or so which wouldn't have suited this point to point winner who has won over three miles but he showed a good determination and attitude to power up the Cheltenham Hill it'll be interesting to see how he fares out against the Mullins Brigade when he unleashes his bumper horses another one that really took my eye for the weekend was Paul Nichols' horse Hitman who just left down the bus um, losing to a head but he gave the winner £20 and I know Paul Nichols is on record saying that this is one of the best horses he has and I thought that was a massive performance and he will go on to pick up many prizes throughout the year another horse that I told you to keep an eye out for last week was Queen's Brook now she she didn't oblige on Sunday in Limerick but I don't think she liked the ground whatsoever and she was also beating her first start last year as well so she is one to keep an eye on I wouldn't be putting any powder on her for uh, the mare's hurdle in Cheltenham at the moment but she is a horse that I would expect to bounce back from that race and she will be a different horse next time up Moving on to my selections for the weekend, the first horse I'm going to put up is a high senor as my nap of the weekend for reasons outlined earlier on the show. My next best is going to be Kitty's Light for the master handicap trainer Christian Williams. This horse was given a very, very, very quiet ride in his last run and was kept out the back and was never really looking like he was interested in getting involved and I think Christian Williams will be saving this horse for a big handicap plot such as this one. My next next best is Laugh a Minute in Dundalk on Friday night at 6pm. This horse has run in Dundalk a few times but over the last few years it has dropped from a mark of 99 down to 92 so the last time he ran in Dundalk, he was up in the mid 90s to high 90s and he's down to a mark of 92 and I think there is a nice race in this horse albeit that he breaks well and is given time to manoeuvre in the straight and make his challenge late and fast. So that's it for episode 2 uh, of uh, the weekly show. We'll be back again next Thursday night when we may have a busier weekend, uh, I'll be able to look ahead the following weekend to uh, any of the big races. And uh, hang in there, everybody. Um, buckle up. From the Stig. And from me, Mickey D. See you next week. Over and out. Bash the bookies. <laughs>